Hey guys, Dan Giles here with Let's Fix It. Hey, I've seen a few questions in some of the Facebook groups that a lot of people are wondering, what's the most common tools that a maintenance person would need? So I want to go through a few tools that I have in my bag that uh, I use pretty much on a regular basis, oh, probably every day. And then I'll go over a few tools that uh, are maybe not everyday tools, but tools that you should have. A couple of the tools that are most important, and I mean the most important tools. Number one, you want to get a good pair of channel locks. Now this is a pair of Stanley Plumber's channel locks. So you can see that they're a little bit turned out a little bit more. The bite is a little bit better for plumbing. And I've gotten where I love these channel locks as opposed to a regular pair of channel locks. Uh, if you want, I'll put a link in the description below to these. Like I said, it's, a, it's actually called a plumber's set of channel locks. You can buy these in three. It's a small, a little six inch, the 10 inch, and the big monster one like that right there, which is really nice. It'll open up pretty wide, and uh, that's the 12, but the, the 10 inch is the most common that you're gonna use. So you definitely wanna pick up a good pair of channel locks. Stanley makes a good one. I'm not really particular on name brand, on, the, on channel locks and pliers and things like that, so I kinda always buy the Stanleys. So go with that, and I'll set this to the side. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have a good, now some people will swear by a six in one. Now I used to use six in ones a lot until Klein came out with an 11 in one. And there are two versions of the 11 in one. And what I mean by that, almost every one of them have two bits. You got a large and a lar large Phillips and a large straight. And of course you take that out, this becomes a quarter inch nut driver, that piece right there. So then when you pull this out, this piece becomes a 5 16 nut driver. But I'm gonna turn it around. Now you have a small Phillips and straight head screwdriver. Those are pretty ingenious to have in a tool that's 11 tools in one. So then you're gonna pull this out. The first thing you're gonna see on mine is that I have two different size square. Now this is really good for working electrical. If you're changing out breakers, you're gonna use the large square to tighten the screw on some of those breakers. Also, the panel screws on, on breaker panels. That large square is gonna help you, it's gonna speed you up taking off breaker panels. And then you got a small one here. This one is good for doing outlets and switches that are in the wall. Of course, then you turn this piece around. All right, here's the surprise. This 11-in-1 gives me, is more for HVAC. That's a valve core remover on that one. I'm gonna put a link in the description below for this one. Um, and the other side is, a, it looks like some kind of a reamer. You can open a hole up with that. Uh, probably not gonna use that one all that often. But the valve core remover, you may if you're working on air conditioning and heating. That's an 11-in-1 for air conditioning and heating purposes with electrical capabilities. So that's one that I have. The one that I use the most popular is this other 11 in one. This is a Klein number 32500. This is an 11 in one. It gives you all the, the Phillips and straight head screws or screwdrivers on one bit. Of course, that's your 5 16 nut driver. You turn this around, you have the squares, the two different size, like I said, one side is good for doing breakers and breaker panels. The other side is good for putting in switches and outlets. That's a good thing to have. And then when you pull out this, here's a good one if you're working on appliances. A lot of appliances have torque screws. GE is notorious for that. Here we have the two most common Torx heads that you're gonna use on appliances. And not just appliances, and there's other items out there that use Torx head screws that's going to help you out pretty good there so 
that's two items for you that you really need to have in your bag. Get you a good Klein 11 in one. Now I'm not married to Klein. If you know of an 11 in one screwdriver out there that's better than a Klein, hey, I'll switch. I don't care. I'm not married to it. I like Klein tools because they're durable, they got good grips, and I've never had an issue with them. So anyway, that's just me. Klein, 11 in one, and a good pair of channel locks. All right, now those two items right there, you're gonna probably use every day on every job that you've got in the maintenance field. So if you're gonna go a little bit further, you wanna get yourself a good pair of side cutters. These are Stanley side cutters, perfect for cutting wire, wire ties, anything that you need to cut that's not hard enough that it's going to damage the head on that. Get you a good set of side cutters. This is Stanley. I'll put that in the description as well. And you're going to want a good set of wire strippers. Now, they make those wire strippers that are all-in-one strippers. Those are okay. Those, if that's what you've got, then use it. But eventually you're going to want to step up to a good pair of strippers. I like these strippers. Everything that you need is right there for all the wire sizes that you're going to be stripping insulation back on. It's got a cutter built into it. And it's just, it's good to have a separate dedicated set of wire strippers. All right, so now we're up to basically four tools. Channel locks, four and one, side cutters, and wire strippers. All right, so of course everybody needs to have a good flashlight. You need that. Uh, if you need a good, a, get a good pair of needle nose pliers. I bought these. They're okay. Uh, they're not. They're a little bit longer, so that I can, if I've got to reach something, I can use these as opposed to a shorter pair of needle nose pliers that are kind of hard to deal with. This is a little bit easier for me to reach in a little bit further to grab something. So. If you want to get the longer set of needle nose pliers, that's fine. If you want to get a regular set of needle nose, that's good. This is not crucial. You don't have to have this, but I've got it in my bag and I use them quite often. All right, the other thing that I, that's a must for maintenance. You need to get yourself a good multimeter and you want to get something that has amp reading capability. Uh, Digital or analog, that's fine. I like to use digital because it's more accurate. But, you know, get you a good, a good multimeter that will do ohms, voltage, AC, DC if you need it, DC. If you don't get DC, that's fine. AC is what you're gonna be working on most. But you wanna be able to have that amperage reading capability. So get you a good digital or analog multimeter. Um, okay, let's move on here. This is something you're going to need if you don't have that cheap set of wire strippers and it's a wire stripper crimper combo. I always like to use a separate crimper. If you're fixing an air conditioner or any kind of a, a any kind of electrical item where you need to put on one of those stake-ons or a coupler or uh, the eyelets, anything that needs to be attached to the end of that wire, you need a good crimper that's going to get you. It's going to give you a good, good crimp. So make sure you got a good set of crimpers. I'm going to try to link all of this stuff in the description below. That way you'll know exactly what you need. Uh, if you don't have to buy them, like I said, if you've got tools that that you're happy with using, then go ahead and use them. There's no shame in your game, as they say. But that's just me. All right. The next thing you need to make sure that you have. Your 10 in one is fine. That's a good screwdriver to have if you're gonna do small jobs, uh, little quick jobs, especially when it comes to the nut driver part of it. Because the quarter inch part of this nut, this, this screwdriver is not really that, it's not that strong a metal, let's put it that way. So you, it is, it, blah, it's gonna be easy to strip that out. So rather than do that, if you've got a lot of screws to remove, Go ahead and get you a good set of a quarter inch magnetic and a 5 16 magnetic nut driver. Now, again, I'm pref uh, my preference is Klein. I've always bought Klein. I've never been unhappy with Klein. You know, one of my mottos is never be afraid to buy the best. You'll never be sorry. 
And when it comes to Klein, for me, I think they're probably one of the best hand tools out there. And I don't think you're going to go wrong. So a good set, quarter and five sixteenths, and magnetic is important. You don't know how important it is until you don't have one. Once you get a magnetic, you'll never go back. I promise you. So get your quarter and five sixteenths nut drivers. All right. If you're in the maintenance field, you're going to need a three eighths nut driver as well. This is good for taking the nuts off of that that little plumbing fixture and that bracket on the side of a garbage disposal. A three eighths nut driver. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You're not going to be using it that much. However, some of the bolts on refrigerator doors, when you're if you ever have to re redo a door or reverse a door. Some of those bolts that are on refrigerator doors are three eighths. These would be good. Sometimes a socket and, and a wrench is better. And I don't know if you can hear that. I got some thunder going on. We got some pretty good rainstorms going on right now. So anyway, five sixteenths, quarter inch, and three eighths nut drivers. That's pretty much the only three nut drivers you're gonna use. And again, I'll put all this in links in the description. Now you do have the six in one, however, you will probably run into cases where you're gonna need just a regular Phillips head screwdriver. And Klein makes a pretty good one. I would venture to say I've had this thing going on 21 years, 20, 20 plus years I know for this Klein Phillips screwdriver. And I've had this Klein straight head screwdriver probably as long. It's getting now where you don't have to use a straight head screwdriver that often, but when you do, you want something that's quality. Uh, I've got a longer straight head screwdriver here, a little bit thinner, it's a thinner head. This is good for when you need it, you've got it. And then the old twirly. This is a Phillips head. They make one of these in a, in a flat head as well, but I don't know how you would use a flat head on a twirly, because it's pretty difficult to use them. But this is really good for doing machine screws, installing or removing deadbolts and doorknobs. That right there will save you from dropping screwdrivers every time. So that's a good tool to have. Now this is something that you don't have to go out and get right away. But uh, there's something you want to put on the back burner and say, when I get a little extra money and I'm at the, at the uh, home improvement store, Lowe's Home Depot, that's where I'm gonna go and the other thing I want to let you know if you don't want to buy them off of the link in my description when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot a lot of these tools that are clients are in the electrical department you won't find them over in the tool section because these are pretty much electrical tools Klein is geared themselves more to electrical and electricians so that's that's where you're gonna find them now the things like the channel locks and the, the needle nose even this, the wire stripper, that's a Klein. That's going to be in your electrical department and the tools that are in the electrical department. And these are going to be, the 11 and ones are going to be electrical also. So anyway, like back to what I said before. The best thing that you can do, have a pair of channel locks, get you an 11 and one. Now you can get the air conditioner one, but I would suggest going ahead and getting just the regular 11 and 1. The 32500 is the part number that you want on that. A good flashlight, a good multimeter, some side cutters, wire strippers, and wire crimpers. Those tools right there and that little pile will get you started and make you where you can do just about anything you need to do. The rest of these tools will come in time and that's about all I got. Now, we'll show you this. This is something that I started doing a few years ago. You know, you got garbage disposals that people drop stuff down in them. Uh, the garbage disposal stops working. There's crap down inside of there that you, you don't want to be sticking your hands down in there. This right here. You can either use a good pair of forceps. And I buy these on Amazon. I think I bought these from a doctor supply or a hospital supply or something like that. And some people think they're used for nefarious reasons. But uh, no, I use them for doing garbage disposal cleanouts, pulling stuff out of disposals. Sometimes it works pretty good if I drop a screw that I can't get to it, you know, I'm missing that distance. I can use this to grab something. That's something you can get later down the line. So, you know, I got a big pair and I got a little pair. 
So anyway, there you go, guys. If you're in the maintenance field, you're just starting out, or if you just if you think you need to upgrade your tools and you're not quite sure what to get, this is good for maintenance. You guys, this is the essentials. This is what you pretty much need to start out with. If you're a homeowner, I would suggest having the same thing. Now, some of the tools used for air conditioning, you're not going to be so much messing with, but the rest of the stuff, yeah, I think you're going to you're going to you want to put that in your essential tool bag for working on stuff around your house. So there you go, guys. That's what I got. The essential tools of a maintenance man or a homeowner, however you want to look at it. That's my bag. You guys take it easy, be kind, and be safe, and I'll see you on the next video.